Well, hello, Renuka. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. And Eric, Hi. Professor Eric, we're going to do lecture number three of his Professor Eric's virtual classroom about the journey of the soul. Hi, Eric. I love you. Yeah. Mom, I'm too excited. We are on a journey, don't forget. And we are moving ahead today. We are trying to understand this journey while living this journey. How awesome is that? So he is excited. And he's very excited with the response the lectures have been receiving, the kind of emails that we have been receiving. And he is um, more prepped up, he's saying, to teach more. He okay. said we started, he said we started these series because. I wanted to teach more about our our journey here because un unless and un um, unless we don't understand from where we are starting, we wouldn't um, understand and realize what's going on presently in our timelines. So he's saying he started just to explain that, and then because of the response, he feels more encouraged to teach. Okay. To teach and. Um, yeah, he is also very much psyched up about um, uh, teaching uh, how to communicate. He's saying, mom, there are so many on the group, so many on the blog who want, who are keen to learn to communicate with souls. And that's the reason he is adding short topics alongside uh, these lectures, which will help uh, the viewers to, you know, follow up, learn small, small topics and ultimately reach your level where they will be able to communicate themselves. Yes. So he's saying that's he's saying that's the aim, and he's saying so. Now, first we'll start with the auras which we started in our last lecture. Um, again, he's saying I'm very happy with the response, and many were able to see the aura. Many were able to go to the deeper levels and see different shapes at different times throughout the video was recorded throughout that time. Good. And he is now, according to what he promised, yeah, he's saying according to what I promised in the last lecture, I would now teach you what colors indicate in the aura. Uh, because many have emailed me, you know, saying the, they saw this shade, they saw this shade, and this is when they started seeing the aura. So it's it's been wonderful. Uh, people are cool. keen to learn. Yeah, people are keen to learn and they're actually practicing. So he wants to uh, reply and explain more about it. And just like he promised last time also that he will teach how to cleanse the aura. Once you right. see your aura, that's a good thing, of course. But he's saying more than being able to see the auras, it's very important that we know how to cleanse it. Because he's saying um, it, it's reflecting the state of your being. So if you know if there's an imbalance, if there's a negativity in that state of being, what would be uh, most uh, logical next step will be to learn how to cleanse that negativity, how to bring in the balance back, how to bring in the light back. And then he's saying, mom, don't forget the state of being again is very, very important if you want to learn to communicate with spirit. So you really can't have negativity and imbalances in your state of being, which are reflected in the aura. You can't have those uh, imbalances and hope to communicate with spirit because the level of vibration at, at what we operate is much higher than the le level of vibration of a human body. Yes. So he's saying, he's, he's showing me a vision where he's saying that I'm here, I'm at this level and he's at this level. And with impurities or imbalances in my aura, I go further down. And hence the gap between my level of vibration and his level of vibration increases. So okay. he's saying what we have to do is to try and reduce this gap, try and come closer so that communication is, uh, the, so that communication flows, so that communication is clear, it's specific, and it's not very subtle. Okay. So he is, uh, he's basically trying to say that aura cleansing is important, but it's also a major, major factor which will help you communicating with spirit. So he's saying we'll carry these uh, series forward and we will introduce short topics which will ultimately lead to a lot of advantages. But he is sort of right now focusing on learn teaching how to communicate with spirit. So right now when he's saying that now that I'm teaching aura cleansing, it's all a preparation towards that. 
so okay. we'll be uh, doing we'll be doing short short topics and um, teaching alongside discussing the journey of the soul he saying this will make the series more interactive people will be more involved they'll be more yes. keen to learn and and you know understand the lecture better so yeah, they, he, a lot he, of people are, are, I think is people, the guardian angels and Eric nudge them to channeling Eric in order to, you know, enter the YouTube channel so that they can yeah. learn. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah. tell us some tips. How do we cleanse that? What do you want to start out first? How to interpret the aura or how to cleanse it? Hmm. He's saying first mom, I again want them to focus on sweeties third eye and again try and visualize aura today he is going to throw some uh, more energy and again would like them to practice he wants all of uh, all of the viewers to take this opportunity to again start practicing he's saying there's a difference when you're practicing alone and there's a difference when you're practicing practicing through these videos because he's there to uh, sort of exaggerate or um, um, you know, amplify the energy, which will make it easier for the viewers to see it. And once they ah. see it, it's also built confidence in them. So okay. I think it's different to practice it alone and it's different to practice it through these videos. So first he's saying, I would again like that activity to happen wherein the viewers are focusing on method and they are again trying to see the aura. And he's saying that should go on uh, through the entire uh, lecture. That should happen. Even while they are listening to the lecture, they can focus on my energies, they can focus on my third eye, and they might see different colors today, they might see different intensity and a different level of energy today. Uh, before giving tips on cleansing the aura, he's saying um, he would first like to indicate, because so many have emailed, you know, that they have seen this color, this shape, and what it means to see that color. Yeah. So he's saying, uh, and the right answer is <laughs> he's sort of, uh, you know, Drum roll, leading please. the band and using <laughs> the right answer is uh, first when you start looking uh, and when you once you start seeing the aura, it's just pure energy, pure white light because you're just connecting with the soul's energy. Once you go deeper into it you should have or would have seen teal the way you saw it last oh, time. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, very important. I just got a message from my daughter presenting Juliet on Alisa Brawley. My oh, brand wow. new grandbaby. Oh, my God. Congratulations. You guys are the first to know. Oh, with me. Oh, Can you say hi? Oh, that is so beautiful. Can you say hi? Can you say hi to everybody? Beautiful. Congratulations. Oh, so adorable. Oh, oh. oh. you guys, y'all are seven, six pounds, 14 ounces, born at 728 a.m. How about that, guys? You are part of the uh, history. Oh, you know. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I had to. That, that's, that was big. So yes, that was great. All right, so so go ahead. I'm sorry. Ah. <laughs> um, he's saying, "Mom, your answer was right." Um, after seeing shades of white in different intensities, uh, the first shade which was visible during that lecture was teal, uh, which is which indicates more of a healing energy. So he says, uh, "These videos, these lectures." Uh, he is throwing a lot of healing energy through my aura once whenever you're watching the videos. Okay. So he's kind of storing that healing energy and it reaches out just towards the screen and it actually uh, is received by the viewer. So that was steel. steel. The, third, uh, the third shade which he uh, made sure that it changes was purple. And he says uh, purple indicates more of a spiritual, um, a highly advanced spiritual uh, level. And if you're able to see purple in my aura, of course, it's, he's been throwing that energy, that higher level consciousness energy. And uh, he's saying that if you are able to see that purple, your third eye is activated, your third eye is cleansed, it's balanced. And that's why you're able to see that higher level um, energy in the aura, which is denoted by the purple shade and then he goes on to say that you might uh, see other shades in um, 
people with different auras and where you see uh, a darker shade a more of a shadow uh, shadow side or a shadow black energy in different parts of the aura it means there is negativity it means there is imbalance and uh, it means absence of light and that's where it needs cleansing and balancing it and if you see brown shades like not so much dark but there is a darker shade to it it means the person is tired and tired must be like low energy physically tired or mentally tired or emotionally tired so yeah. he's saying there are different shades which denote different states of being but these are the uh, most common shade which a um, a regular uh, layman will be able to see in the aura so he's saying that's about auras and he's saying continue continue practicing continue focusing on the third eye part and if you want to see your own aura just stand in front of the mirror and focus on your third eye and he's saying uh, mom it's all about practice it will not happen uh, just once you have to keep practicing you have oh, to I keep see. connecting with the I energy see, uh, on you i see teal on on the left and a little bit of pink on the right maybe but just yeah, yeah. it's hard for me to concentrate right now yeah. oh my god okay <laughs> okay go ahead sorry So you saying you're right, mom. I'm sort of um, mixing and matching the shades for people at different levels to see uh, see the aura and see the shades. So he's oh. sort of catering to people at different level of ability. So he's trying to um, shift the energy levels all the time so that everyone is able to connect with it and is able to see. Because once you see this aura, once you see this on energy, it gives you confidence in your ability. Yeah. Oh, I, I really see it on you. Yes, for sure. Yeah. That is so yeah. cool. Yeah. And he's saying that even even when mom, even when the after the video is recorded, you want to open it at any time, you will see the aura over there, because he's and, focusing lot of energy in my aura to for it to be visible. So he's saying at any point of time, you open these videos, even the last one, you will see the aura so clearly and so strongly and brightly. So he's saying that's about auras. Now he wants to explain a few quick methods to um, how to cleanse auras, how to cleanse this negativity and this imbalance. Because he's saying uh, the next uh, most important logical step is that if you see an imbalance, if you see a lesser amount of light or lighter shades, or if you're not able to see the aura at all, you definitely need cleansing. Because not being able to see the aura after focusing and practicing so much also indicates. that there is an imbalance which should be uh, corrected so he's saying that's where aura cleansing will uh, come into the picture he's saying but there will be times even if you are able to see the aura you will still need cleansing aura will always need cleansing he's yeah. saying because um, he's showing me a picture where he's showing me mother earth and he's showing mother earth was created you know this universe was created this universe was chosen for the souls specifically to come down and experience all that was the opposite of the spirit world which is more on the negative shade so called negative shade so he's saying mom if you if you if you stop and think most of the experiences come out of pain most of the experiences True. are negative there's so yes. much pain there's so much suffering and because of that that's the reason that the overall vibration and the energies of mother mother earth is mostly negative yeah so you saying and right now you are existing on mother earth you this energy is all around you the negativity this, this, wait, the pain and the suffering a, sorry you think that's what is needed does mother earth i'm sorry have an aura too yeah yeah sorry if you yeah. just said that because Every, I, I, i can't keep my mind straight right now <laughs> i'm thinking about the baby <laughs> but uh okay really okay <laughs> Is it, yeah. is it a, a reflection of what's going on with the collective on Earth? Yes. yes, and he's saying, "Mom, it will always be. There will be always be negative imbalances uh, in the energy of Mother Earth because that's the kind of experiences we come here for. That's the kind of experience it offers, and that's why the vibration is dense. That's why there is negativity and imbalance in the energy. It will always be there because that's the kind of reality we have come to face and experience here." but that being said that being said 
we are all the time existing with this kind of energy surrounding us all the time and it keeps hitting our aura it keeps affecting our aura so it's very important the way we clean our bodies daily the way we clean uh, clean our physical selves it's very important we keep cleansing our energy because we are yeah. getting hit by this negativity wherever mm-hmm. we go wherever we are located we are getting hit by this negativity all the time so you think just like uh, we feel it's important for our health to uh, you know uh, keep cleansing our physical bodies it's important we keep cleansing our energetic bodies and aura cleansing is the first step towards it okay so he he's showing me uh, the first method he's saying i'm going to uh, explain few quick methods which will help in cleansing the aura and cleansing cleansing the negativity and the imbalance uh, first he's showing me a shower like whenever you are taking a shower whenever you're taking a bath imagine a golden light coming instead of water imagine you are bathing with golden light and this golden light is cleansing away all the negativity and darkness he's saying mom it's important for you to you're doing very heavy energy energy work yeah and it will help you it will help you he's saying this visualization is uh, is powerful but the intention matters how strong and powerful your intention is that will um, ultimately lead to the actual cleansing of the aura but he's saying it's very short it's very quick it's very easy to remember whenever you're taking a bath a shower to cleanse your physical body for a few minutes visualize the golden light is cleansing your energetic body so you're taking that golden light from the shower your entire energetic body is get, getting cleansed and then you can visualize black de- negative energy flowing through the drain while you are bathing back to, so back saying, to this, mother this earth kind of, mother earth is a great recycler yeah. of that negative energy too right you told me yes yes oh that's yeah. awesome so you think this visualization that. is quick and yeah and you just put right amount of intention to it and it actually happens from it actually helps this visualization with the right amount of intention it actually helps it actually helps you feel more strong and healthier even physically because the energetic body ultimately uh, affects the physical body okay so you saying that's one quick visualization which we can use to keep cleansing our auras all the time you saying mom remember your duty is as important uh, it's as it is to the physical body as it is to the soul to the energy yeah. of the soul so right. um, the way you make sure that you bathe daily to keep your physical vessel clean it's very important that you bathe your energetic body also to keep removing that negativity and he's saying don't forget with this negativities you fall lower at the vibrational level and i need you at a higher level to communicate with you clearly so it's the most quickest and easiest method to raise your level of vibration by cleansing your energy body by cleansing your aura and of course it helps in communication that's the point and the second he is again showing me one more visualization again very quick this is what i use for myself and he's just prompting me to share that um i visualize that uh, my body is an empty vessel it's like an empty bucket you know in the shape of my body and i visualize white light coming from the universe entering through my crown chakra and since it's a hollow bucket it flows directly down to my soles and then the white light starts filling this bucket in the shape of my body my entire body gets filled with this white light and this white light then starts flowing outside and it flows it overflows like the water overflows oh, from the bucket yeah. so same way the white light is overflowing yeah the white light is overflowing and it's completely encompassing my physical body from all the sides like it's flowing overflowing from all yeah. the sides and this white light completely encompasses my physical body he's saying this is again a uh, very effective again the intention has to be strong the visualization uh, will develop um, if you keep practicing it if you keep visualizing it all the time every day at least and you will be very clear with the visualization and initially it might take time for you to visualize everything but ultimately you will be able to visualize it far quickly so if you ha- if you have a session if you have an urgent session just sit just breathe deeply and just focus on the visualization and your energy will be cleansed the, the, oh yeah okay it, it, is there a breathing technique you do along with these uh, things like the golden shower that doesn't sound right uh, Uh, he's saying you're filling with white light. 
He's saying, "Mom, you're right. Um, any visualization that you do, any um, uh, any uh, creative visualization which you're doing at your third eye, uh, through your third eye, it's very important that your all your senses are focused in the present moment. It's very important." for your senses for your awareness to be completely present in the present moment for you to be completely mindful it's very important you be with the breath yeah and being with the breath is being with the breath is just being with the movement of the breath being with the inhalation and the exhalation that's all that will ensure that your entire consciousness is focused in the present moment and when you visualize with Uh, that entire consciousness in that present moment when you visualize that visualization becomes stronger and that visualization actually manifests where your physical vessel is getting cleansed and your energy body is getting cleansed yes so he's saying that it's all about intention mom and your intention will be uh, stronger if you if you are if you, all your senses are completely present in the present moment so yeah breathing deep breathing helps being with the movement of the breath helps while you're visualizing it so that your awareness or your consciousness does not escape to some place else and the visualization is not that strong so you think that's the second method and uh, the third method he's saying that if you find yourself at a place or if you find yourself with a person and you understand intuitively that your energies are being sucked and you start feeling low on energy or you start feeling negative and imbalanced in your mind or physically also he saying immediately uh, imagine or visualize a golden bubble spreading from your heart chakra and this golden bubble is spreading from your heart chakra on all the sides and it becomes so huge and so big that this entire golden bubble is encompassing your entire body you are escorted in that golden bubble and then yes. you have to visualize that you are safe and pure and cleansed in this golden bubble and all the negativity is coming towards you is hitting the golden bubble and going back so that's the intention you are setting that you are surrounded with divine golden light and no negativity can enter your aura he's saying this is one of a quick quickest methods if you are feeling low or stuck on energy at a specific negative place or when you are with certain people whom we call energy vampires you know they just suck out the energy out of you yeah so, uh, oh, i've been around a lot of those and being an empath you know so can yes. uh can you and i create some sort of frequency set when somebody needs their vibration it's remote needs their vibration raised for any reason i i know probably going to last forever but is there a frequency set if somebody says oh my god i need my frequency to go up yeah he's saying yes mom we can work on it okay um when you work on him when you direct your energies um uh, he will be sending his team or himself to go and work on the aura and uh, raise mm. the vibration level of that person that is totally doable he's saying yes mom it's a good idea he's saying oh good we should do that and a lot of people uh, this do. service yeah yeah and this service will help all those who are aspiring to communicate with spirit Yeah. So he's saying it's it's good. It's a good idea. He's saying. Well, but the one definitely help to do that. But then if they're impasse, I mean, something else will hit them, and their vibration will go down. So I guess what do you want me to tell them that they can use one of these techniques to to protect that now elevated vibration, or hmm. or how long does it last? Uh, you know that sort of thing. Uh, he's saying, mom, mom, it has to be done daily, just like you uh, bathe daily. And oh. that's why he's given very short, very short, short and quick visualization. Good. Okay, my God. It has to be done daily. But he's saying yes. When you do it over a period of time, you reach a higher level of vibration where, uh, where maybe you are getting affected every other day. And when you reach this vibration, it's too strong, and you get affected very less. Like, oh, good. Uh, there's a very less problem. Yeah, he's saying you keep cleansing yourself. You keep cleansing yourself. You reach a level. from where it's difficult for you to fall even though Good. whatever work your energy work you are doing so you think that's possible okay so oh, that's helpful so yeah this is he saying this is all about auras he saying focus focus again he's getting back to that topic of focusing so that they can see the aura he's very excited for everyone to see the aura he's always excited when i receive emails because 
um, so many of them, they don't realize that they have powers. They don't realize that they have abilities just because they have never had a chance to test these abilities. Right. So I think this is, also, this is also for those, you know, who don't know that they have abilities and I really want to get out to them, reach out to them to tell them you can do this. You exactly. know? So he's excited about it. So he, yeah. And he's saying now let's, he's just <laughs> pulling his hands like this. He let's get back to our journey. And he's getting naughty again. Yeah, he's showing me that, mom, we are on the journey. Remember, it's your journey. You are a small, tiny, plumpy, and he's showing fat so <laughs> working in the spirit world. Oh, yeah. I believe <laughs> it. I'm he's just calling you a <laughs> <laughs> He's calling you a fat soul again. He's getting calling naughty. Calling me what? Calling you a fat soul. <laughs> a fat soul? Yeah, you are a small, tiny, plumpy, oh. and he's showing me. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I guess I need to go on a spiritual diet. He's just joking around. Yeah, I know. Of course, he's being naughty. Back. He has to be naughty. He has to be. He has to be. And also, he's very much excited about these series. So he's. It's showing twenty-two me, hours. Uh, yeah, he's showing me that. What was that? The, uh, that was my time prompt. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Sorry okay. That. Okay. Um, then he is um, showing me that we are back to that point where we were discussing last time that we were planning our soul first soul plan. A soul is on a journey and it's planning its first soul plan and it makes a list of all the lessons and it also um, enters into spiritual contacts with others uh, to exchange, to learn and to teach uh, these lessons. And you think this is where uh, this is where the karma also starts, but the karma is not yet built until uh, until the first lifetime is over. He's saying right. the first lifetime there is no concept of karma. There is uh, there is just free will and your soul plan. What matters is that you respect your soul plan and you learn what you set out to learn in your first lifetime because that's how. You have planned your soul and that's how you've entered into spiritual contracts with other souls. Uh, he goes on to say, said, Mom, don't forget that it is your journey. The soul plan is yours, but this soul plan is connected to many souls. It has a rippling effect. So if I have a spiritual contract with one soul and that soul has spiritual contract with others, ultimately how our spiritual contracts work out, it also affects, it also has a rippling effect with that soul's spiritual contract with others. In the similar way, he's showing like tree branches, you know, they are spreading out in all the directions that with whatever soul you have a spiritual contract with, they are also involved in contracts with other souls. And whatever you do will have a rippling effect on so many souls because so many souls are ultimately connected to you. So he's saying what matters is how beautiful beautifully you fulfill your soul plan how beautifully you fulfill your spiritual contracts right now we are at our first lifetime so the karma has not yet entered the scene but today we will talk about spiritual amnesia since karma has not yet entered the screen uh, we will now understand why spiritual amnesia and what spiritual amnesia he's saying the only reason you go off track from your soul plan is because you forget yeah if you that's the only reason he's saying that's one thing where you forget your soul plan and you end up creating imbalance in your spiritual contract. And that small imbalance that you create in your spiritual contract has a rippling effect on the spiritual contract of so many souls who are indirectly and directly oh, connected. Yeah, but you're supposed to have spiritual amnesia, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that he's the, saying at the same about a different kind of, of forgetting, maybe? Or no, no, same, same. Okay. He's saying. He's saying, of course, it's needed, mom, but it's the it's the very reason also why we are stuck in the reincarnation. So he's okay. saying, I'll first explain why is it so much needed. Everyone knows that we are stuck because of that, because if we would have stuck to our soul plans, we would have achieved our objectives, we would have achieved our level of growth in every lifetime, and we would have come out of the reincarnation wheel much sooner, much faster. But that's not the case. And if spiritual amnesia is responsible for us getting stuck in the reincarnation wheel, why are we not being held? Why is this concept so important that the spirit will just, you know, it just waits and watch uh, for us to get out of it despite going through spiritual amnesia. So he's saying today I'm going to explain 
um, despite being the very reason we are stuck in the reincarnation wheel, how spiritual amnesia is still very important to the entire theme of reincarnation, to the entire theme of this journey of the soul we are on. So he's saying, um, mom, you must believe that all we come here to do is to learn. And what we have chosen to learn, we have chosen to learn through negative uh, experiences, so-called negative experiences, right. because these are the kind of experiences which are not available in the spirit world. So he's saying, so you have chosen those experiences and when you come down, you know, you know that uh, he's saying, let's take the example from a previous lecture where uh, we were discussing that maybe we are in a spiritual contact and you want to experience pain. I want to experience guilt. And that's why I will, you know, run over you with a car. If you remember, yeah. because I've seen that lecture. Yeah. So he's, uh, <laughs> he's taking that, he's taking that forward and he's saying, imagine you entering that spiritual contact with, with sweetie here in the sp spirit world. Once you are down and you remember, you remember this is the date, this is the time, this woman is going to run, <laughs> run over me with a car. Would you step out of your home? No. Would you step out of your home? No, <laughs> He's no. saying, you, you are in the body right now. You know how pain feels. You know how pain feels. Despite knowing that you are a soul, despite knowing that nothing can harm the soul and this body is... Um, you know, this body will eventually disintegrate. But would you still, knowing the kind of pain your body will go through to suffer that accident, will you no, go out on the no. road? So he's saying that's, that's the very reason spiritual that, emotion is perfect. important. That is a perfect, that is the best analogy I have heard ever for the importance of a, a spiritual amnesia. That's awesome. Good, good job. So he's, he's thinking quite ahead, you know, when he introduced this uh, example in our previous lecture, he knew how it's going to go forward. And he's taking that same, uh, same example for us to understand it much better. So he's saying, mom, this, this is important because you know everything. The point is to realize. And you will not realize if you remember what you know while you're in the body. You have to forget it. You have to experience it. You have to realize it through that experience. And that's the, that's the aim. That's the goal of coming here. That's why spiritual amnesia is important because if spiritual amnesia is not there, the essence is lost. You will not realize. Yes. You will know what you already know. Yeah. And also he's saying there are many other reasons he's saying that, you know, we, uh, a soul has to forget because he's saying all these contracts, you know, you try and enter contracts in different, reincarnations with your same soul family so if we have a contract we sort of take that contract forward and in every every lifetime we choose to learn and teach from each other so i think if you remember in one reincarnation that sweetie uh, chose to draw uh, draw a car over you in and in the next reincarnation if you're supposed to be a mother and daughter will you forgive her <laughs> will oh. you act will you treat her like your daughter if you remember the pain she gave you in that oh, reincarnation oh wow, yeah that's true so he's saying um he's saying spiritual contacts will keep changing in every reincarnation and if you remember the details of every reincarnation that particular reincarnation will lose out on its essence it will completely lose the essence and you would just feel like a soul. You would not feel anything and you'll remember all the sharp pain and uh, negative memories of the past and you'll not be able to live your experience completely yeah. and hence realize what you're here to realize. So you think in that way, uh, there are many reasons where um, spiritual amnesia is important. Uh, it is there so that your experience is total of a negativity that you've chosen. He's saying also mom, fear is a huge factor. Fear is a huge factor which plays um, and that's what makes spiritual amnesia important because a soul knows that whatever it will go through, uh, it has to learn and experience, most of it will come through suffering and pain. And while living this life, invariably we create so many fears in our, in our consciousness, but knowing that we are going to face all these negativities, we are going to face all the sufferings, no matter how many lessons they are bringing along with them, you'll still be so fearful, you will resist all of those experiences and your uh, and your total learning will not be complete the essence will not be complete the essence remains intact only when you face a situation not knowing that you're going to face it 
Yes. That, that will bring out the real essence of your soul. That will bring out the real realization of your soul. So you see, uh, that way there are many reasons for spiritual amnesia. Uh, he is also uh, saying, also mom, picture this. Yeah, he's showing me a beautiful version again. He's saying, mom, picture this. You have, you have made your soul plan. It's all written, okay? It's all written and you remember it. When you come down, you remember it. This is my soul plan. Uh, this person is going to come into my life. This is the lesson. This is the spiritual contact. I think life will become so much mechanical. You will be like robots. You know what's going to happen. You will not live life. You already oh. expect what is going to happen. Right. There is no mystery. No gender. Yeah, it will be so mechanical. And how yes. would you feel it and experience it completely if you know before and it's going to happen? Life will be very mechanical and very robotic. It will not be spontaneous. It will not be natural. And again, that will take away the essence of so much of her. No, all, you, all you get is a conceptual component. You never get the experiential component. You have to have the experience, yes. not just the concept. You have to feel hot in order to really know what cold is, for example. Yeah. And uh, towards this, he's saying that you're so right, mom. Concept is just knowledge, information, wisdom. Experience leads to realization. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah, so he's saying that's the difference, and you're so right when you say that. Well, you told you told it to me. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> professor. Say, no, mom, say, no, mom, you're very intelligent. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's saying, um, mom, this is uh, again what we are trying to understand is the reason of spiritual amnesia and why spiritual amnesia is so very important. Although it has become a major obstacle for uh, for our souls to come out of the reincarnation wheel, we don't uh, we don't take it out of the scheme of things because it is as important. Now, what matters is how we work around it so that alongside it, you know, using the advantages of it, we are still able to work around it to achieve the objective of liberation. That's what we have to understand. That's what. That's how uh, we'll be able to come out of this reincarnation. I mean, that's how we'll be able to remember our soul plan, keeping spiritual amnesia, respecting spiritual amnesia for its importance in the scheme of things. And he's saying, mom, guess what? I'm going to teach how to do that. In okay. future series. <laughs> hey. He's saying, I want excitement. He's saying, I'm going to create a lot of excitement around these series. And he's saying, I'm going to teach that. That's the secret, he's saying. That's the essence that's uh, that's when a lifetime a soul plan will be successful and he's saying that was his objective to start these series in first place um so he's trying to build a lot of excitement around it he's himself very excited and he's saying i'm going to teach that uh now he's saying but let me explain it to you in technical terms he's 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 wearing a goggles and uh, wearing a specs and uh, he has a book and he's saying let me uh, teach you the technical formulas the technical aspects of how spiritual amnesia uh, gets lodged into a consciousness, how spiritual amnesia is experienced by a soul. Um, so he is now, he's now showing me a vision. Uh, he's showing me it is a small human body, a small figure, it's a human okay. body. And this is the soul, the soul who is on the journey and it's, it's the first lifetime. And the spirit guides are uh, guiding that soul to take the first birth, to take the to take a human body for the first time. The soul plan is intact. The spiritual contracts are intact. And he's showing a small figure human body. It's like a baby body. And the soul is so huge. He's saying, mom, a small, small human baby. He's saying, you will relate with it. <laughs> he's uh, talking about your granddaughter, your new granddaughter. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he's saying this is the soul this is the small baby so a huge soul and a small human body also he's saying don't forget the human body is made up of physical elements and because of it because it's made up of physical matter yeah. it has a dense heavy vibration the consciousness is heavy oh yeah the soul on the other hand the soul on the other hand is is light is it's just pure energy. It does not have any physical dense matter. So how does that big it's thing get to that little baby? I'm thinking a shoehorn. Huh? <laughs> a shoehorn in there. <laughs> That's what he's trying to explain. And he's just showing me that although the soul is huge, the energy used, it's so much light because it's pure spirit. It's pure energy. It's pure light. 
and the baby's body although it's so small it's still so dense and so heavy because it's made up of physical matter yes he saying and then he's showing me that when the soul wants to enter soul or lighter consciousness is trying to enter into a physical body a heavier consciousness so he's saying mom when a lighter energy gets mixed into a heavy dense energy what would be the outcome what would be the result it will be negative it will be sorry it will be heavy not negative it will be heavy dense energy because the lighter energy will right. get dissolved will get assimilated in the heavier energy okay. the result will be heavier he's mm-hmm. saying um because the body has a de- denser consciousness has a heavy energy heavy consciousness the soul which is of a higher consciousness which is of a very lighter energy has to sort of he's showing me that it's contracting its energy it's contracting its consciousness and then entering uh, the body of that baby and when it enters it gets dissolved it gets disappeared and what is what is re- what is remaining is just that heavy denser energy so you think that lighter energy when it gets mixed with the heavier denser energy what remains is just that heavy denser energy and for a soul's higher consciousness to accommodate into a heavy denser physical matter body it's very important for the soul to contract its level of energy to contract its level of consciousness so that it can sustain in that heavier consciousness it can't it can't be belong to a very high level of consciousness and yet sustain in the body because the body is at a very denser uh, heavier right. level right he's saying um this process when the soul contracts its energy its level of consciousness this is where the knowledge gets contracted the memory of soul plan the wisdom of a, uh, the spirit world of us being a soul all that memory gets contracted and gets lost into the heavier denser consciousness of the human body and this is where the soul forgets this is where the soul forgets oh, interesting because it gets it gets suppressed into the heavier consciousness of the body well i heavy- told me a long time ago that the soul is actually connected um to the body in in the hollow spaces of the microtubules of the cells that that the energy of that hollow space and those microtubules are like what helps retain the the integrity of each cell but also as a bond of cell division so that's that's kind of neat right is it is it are you still saying yeah. that yeah yeah he's saying yes mom the soul memory here what i'm referring is the soul memory does get stored in the cells of the human body yeah. it is still there but it's suppressed because of the heavier consciousness Right. and this is where the soul forgets this is he says i explain to you why amnesia is important but this is how it actually technically happens that when a soul enters the body so you think a lighter consciousness is hitting a heavier consciousness and when this hit goes when the soul enters the body this is where it forgets this is where the memory gets suppressed with the denser consciousness of the body and this is where we forget and this is where we come into the consciousness of the body where we relate ourselves like we are the body and you forget uh, all the memories of the spirit world all the memories of our soul plan the memories of us being a soul and that's how the human body that's how the journey in the human body starts okay so that's cool. saying, uh, that's that's um, that's uh, all about uh, spiritual amnesia i is saying uh, next uh, lecture he is going to talk about how the first lifetime goes he's saying the very first lifetime is very different from the subsequent uh, lifetimes because that's where karma is involved in the first lifetime karma has not yet come into the picture and the next lecture he is going to uh, teach how first karma is created how our very first karma was created and then he'll go on to explain a great deal about karma to help us understand why we are stuck in the reincarnation wheel okay so he's saying uh, we have come to the conclusion mom that the purpose of taking the human body is nothing but learning and experiencing yeah it's and like remembering um, more than learning right it's remembering yeah. right yeah. it's remembering whatever yeah yeah experiencing learning realizing. relearning relearning maybe maybe yeah. that's it yeah and he's saying um and that relearning we do according to a very specific soul plan that we chalk up in the spirit world and from here on we will um, move forward on the journey of the soul we will first understand 
what happens in the first lifetime how a first karma is created and how eventually a soul goes on to create so much karma that it gets stuck in the reincarnation wheel so you think we are done with the purpose of human life we are done with spiritual amnesia now we'll take the journey forward and go into more intricate detail aspects of our physical human life the reason is why we are stuck how spiritual amnesia plays such a huge role how to work around it and lot many concepts he's saying he's saying in the process he's going to explain lot many concepts in detail so as uh, for us to actually understand the journey he's saying once you understand the journey mom it'll be so easy to live it okay interesting that's it's fascinating i i love this series my hats off to you yeah, ranuka. ranuka uh how do they get in touch with you channeling spirit um they can or... get channeling spirit world.com also um i welcome all the emails if they are focusing and they are trying to see auras i welcome the emails and i might not be able to reply to all of them but i'll try my best and um i really want them to work on seeing the auras because i know eric has beautiful plans to teach more and more about it and it will just only, it will only bring them closer to spirit communication yeah i mean keep pl playing the video this youtube guys and and just practice on looking at her third eye and seeing her aura because it's pretty it's a eric has started beautiful jumping beautiful eric is, yeah eric has started jumping saying, mom 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 um what, 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 what? I, <laughs> he's saying i want to teach i want to teach and uh, if possible we'll start holding workshops for all those who want a more direct subjective experience of these uh, of these topics of these learnings and my we might conduct a series of workshop to teach them in great detail very subjectively very directly but he's saying but that's for later right now i want them to focus and see the aura awesome and you guys uh, so i'm going to talk with eric uh, later in the skater energy field about you know this whole raising vibration service that maybe we can provide so y'all check yeah. in atlantisscalar.com a t l a n t i s s c a l a r.com and i'll put everything right here in the title page if i remember all right bye ranuka thank you bye, bye. eric i love you bye. this was bye -bye. lovely bye bye bye